Hey everybody and welcome to another segment in our RMUS Tech Week. As you know, today we are focused on energy and specifically today we have our guests with Key AI and I, I have Naya Choi with Key AI. Go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Hi everyone, my name is Naya. I'm a Director of Product Marketing at Key AI. Very nice to meet you all and happy to be here. Awesome. Hey, thanks. Uh, I mean, thanks for the intro. And honestly, um, I think we're just going to jump right into it. So uh, Key AI is a software solution. Uh, I mean, really geared toward these things. So will you just kind of give us an introduction to what is Key, Key AI? What is it for? So Key AI is your giant leap for digital inspection. And what that means now is that we're a software solution that trains use case specific computer vision for your infrastructure and um, assets. Gotcha. Perfect. So you can so use it's... your inspection data. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. You, you can use your uh, inspection data, whether it's collected by drone or handheld camera. Um, um, you can process it into our software and um, perform a digital inspection. Perfect. So, I mean, this is something, and, and the people who work here with me know that this is something that I had wanted for a long time, which is a way, an easily usable way to be able to log data, to be able to archive data, and to be able to use it in a way that, it, that it's easily accessible so that we can, so basically again, so that we can review and manage data. Um, I, think, I think that's really what this platform feels like to me when we jump into it. Um, does that, I mean, do you have anything more to add on that? Because that's sure what it feels like that to me. Definitely, yeah. We make digital inspection process a lot faster and more accurate. And at the same time, we allow you to create your own computer vision algorithms. So I think that's sort of our key differentiator uh, among any other software that are out there. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it sounds like everything basically that I just mentioned and then some. So um, without further ado, let's, uh, let's jump right into it. And I believe you have a demonstration for us that we can check out. You got it, Jace. Can you see my screen okay? Yes, we can. So when our user first log into Key Studio, this is for the first homepage that you'll be landed on. So the homepage of Key Studio is the, the space where all your inspection data and your users live. By this, I mean all the inspection data that were gathered to create an asset, and you can in, you can organize it by sites, assets, and inspections. So as you can see, you can see all the assets that are different types um, we've already uploaded. And let's go into this grain silo asset that we're in Canada. Um, what you're seeing right now is the accumulation of different inspection data that was captured in different dates. And let's go into this one September 2nd data um, and you can see all the visual data that was uploaded into this inspection profile. So this visual data was uploaded to create a 3D digital twin. And when I click on inspect, this is where your digital inspection process really begins. You can see all the 2D imageries that were uploaded into this uh, key connect we call it. Um, you can filter out inspection data by type, and you can also flag images and see images with markups only. You click on an image, and what you're seeing now is the 3D digital twin that was created using your inspection data. Here, what you can do is click on a point, and our software is able to pick uh, the point that you have selected and the 3D digital twin in relation to the 2D high fidelity image. Yeah, and this is honestly, this is one of my favorite things about this software is again, you know, a lot of our users have experienced that sometimes, um, you know, digital twins as far as an inspection 
standpoint can uh, leave a little bit to be desired just because of the nature of digital twinning and stitching images together. Sometimes things get kind of erased where they shouldn't or, or something like that. So that's one of the things I really appreciate about this software is that, okay, yes, we have a digital twin, which is useful, but also when we click on a specific point, the software is automatically saying, this is the image, this is the raw imagery, the high res imagery that you originally captured from that space and this is the image that hasn't been touched, hasn't been pushed through an algorithm or something like that, and you know that you're getting that raw imagery. It's one, one of my favorite parts about this software. That's great, Jace. We totally agree on your point on why we focus on the 2D, 2D image rather than the 3D digital twin. So 3D digital twin is acting as a way to navigate through the 3D space. However, when the user clicks on an image, um, we pick the best capture image for, their, uh, for the point of click. I'm just gonna make this smaller. And then from this point on, the another most important reason why we uh, focus on the 2D image is because of training your own computer vision. Um, of course, when you click on different images and you're in, while you're inspecting, you're going to need some tools to create markups on the image. Um, for this, we, use, we recommend uh, to you to use our AI segmentation tool. So what you're doing is creating a bounding box around the interested area, and right away we're able to detect some of the interested area for that an anomaly. So for this, what we're doing in the background is that we're using KAI baseline algorithm to detect the foreground and the background of, of the image for your experience to be a lot faster and more effective. So what you can do from this point is click on a point and sort of uh, maneuver around the tool to make sure that you have the most accurate and most tight area segmented for that anomaly. Because at the end of the day, what you're doing is um, using this data directly as the training data for your own training, uh, sorry, for your own AI algorithms. So this is very important um, for our software is that we uh, give this tool to create the AI training data in the hands of the inspectors and the engineers themselves so they can have the full control over the quality of, quality of your training data. Right, so this so is kind of, can, of course, um, sorry, real quick, this is kind of where the AI part of the key AI comes in. So you're actually, you're doing this, you're identifying things and basically training the software to say, this is the stuff that I'm interested in, and that will come into play when you're doing inspections, repeat inspections over and over again. Is that right? Yeah, Jace, uh, you're so right about that. Um, so let me just quickly show you an example of how this might look like in a real life example. So we have an example where we have detected some cracks on the asphalt of Quebec City. So as you can see, the red lines are detected using the all, uh, training data that was created by our software. Um, if you were paying attention in the earlier video, um, you could probably see some of the cracks that were detected, false detected, um, for, for example, utility lines. So these sort of false detection can be avoided if you continue to create more markups using our software. So at the end of the day, um, the accuracy of your, uh, of your AI algorithms depends on your training data um, that is in the hands of the inspector. And you can do this with key AI. Gotcha, you know, so it seems to me, um, honestly, the, the more you use this software, the smarter it gets and the more effective it is uh, you know, again, just the more you use it, the more effective the algorithm is, the more effective the training you've done to, to it is. And, uh, you know, again, the more useful and the quicker you're going to be able to do these jobs. Basically, again, in these repeat inspections or any of these inspections, it's just, it's going to get more intelligent as you go. Um, so, I mean, 
I'm just looking at this again from the outside just a little bit. We've been we've been in there and, and playing around with it and been really impressed with it so far. But you know, to me, one of the big things is we talk about the benefits of our solutions and the benefits of the software. To me, it's like, hey, we're getting a, an extremely simple user interface with a great management platform. So you know, we get this question a lot. Hey, I captured all these photos. I captured all this data. What do I do with it? Where does it go? How do I archive it? How do I manage the storage? What what am I supposed to do with all this this stuff? And you know, you can correct me, but I'm, if I'm wrong, but you know, this feels like it's that solution. It's it's going to fill that hole for a lot of people. You're exactly right, Jace. Um, so some of the key benefits of Key AI is that you can label your markups with a very powerful AI-powered tools, um, and you can train your own module for your own industry-specific anomaly uh, specifications. So we understand, especially in the energy sector, that different uh, industry may have different specifications, and this sometimes really hurts the accuracy of the computer vision and algorithms. So this is why we give this uh, tools in the hands of the inspectors for a specific inspection company. So then they can be in control of the training data to um, create that anomaly uh, computer vision algorithms. And of course, you can manage um, different types of data on a centralized location where you can securely process and share inspection data. So you can collaborate between the teams or different clients effortlessly. Gotcha. Yeah. And again, that's, that's another one of those, uh, uh, in addition to that other question that we had, um, which is, great, I've got all this data. How do I give it to somebody so that somebody who knows what they're looking at can they so that they can see it and and create an action based on what we've discovered with this data you know so that's the other thing that that it seems like key ai really feels that fills that hole is it's like okay i've got it i know what i'm doing with it how do i get it to somebody else and that that's one of the one, one of my other favorite things about this software is it's really easy to be like hey, okay, these are our findings, check this out, and then again, it can be actionable. So, you know, kind of on that note, you touched on this a little bit, um, what kind of users are using Key AI right now? You know, what kind of fields does, uh, does Key AI fit into? I'd say if you're looking for an innovative uh, software solution to really level up your inspection program to the next level, um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and you have no idea where to start, um, definitely come to us and use our software. With its easier, easy um, user interface, you can just easily uh, train your computer vision algorithms, and that becomes very effortless. And of course, if you're inspectors or engineering team that manages multiple types of data, like uh, below and underwater, uh, uh, at the same time, you uh, deal with aerial data like drone data. Um, our software can manage all the different types of data. So for bridges or dam where you have under as well as uh, above uh, the, uh, the infrastructure where you have different types of data, you can, you can inspect that data very easily with our software. Yeah, definitely. I mean, again, I think uh, you can see this and uh, I... I just see this and I immediately have all these scenarios in my head of where this software is is absolutely useful. So, you know, we're, we're kind of getting short on time here uh, and then just kind of wrap this up a little bit. Tell, my, tell us a little bit more. I mean, obviously we see JPEGs and stuff like that. What, what are the other types of data and stuff like that that can be imported and utilized with Key AI? Um, so, of course, we take um, RGB data. We also take thermal data, um, so you can compare them together uh, to inspect better. Um, you can use RGB data to create a 3D digital twin. Um, you can also upload handheld camera data, so for different focal lengths, a zoomed-in image, and things like that. Um, we, we, like I mentioned, we. Um, deal with sonar data for underwater imagery. We also deal with LiDAR data for a more quick um, overview of a site, and as well as some uh, GCP data that is used for orthomosaic. That's for more accurate measurements of defects. Um, and we, we can also upload supplementary data like PDF um, for uh, things like um, 
um, like a plan of a site and things like that. So you can all manage all the data in one place and share with your collaborators. Perfect. And yeah, I mean, that, that really kind of seems to run the gamut of pretty much uh, anybody, any of our enterprise customers that we're dealing with. I mean, LiDAR data, thermal, JPEGs, uh, PDFs, sonar data, that was a new one to me. I, I actually didn't realize that. So um, that's it. I love that. And again, you know, I feel like I keep saying this when we, when we do these segments is, we, you know, because they're kind of short and sweet is that, again, it's, it's kind of scratching the surface of what, of what this type of stuff is capable of and how useful of a tool it can be. Um, so, uh, hey, do you have anything else to add before we kind of kind of wrap this up uh, and we say goodbye to our users or our, our viewers? Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for watching this. Um, would love to speak with you if you're interested in uh, developing your own computer vision algorithms. Um, happy to help our teamies based in Toronto. Um, yeah, we're very solid uh, uh, AI enthusiast. So I'm very excited to be part of this. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, again, it's 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 exciting software that uh, it, it and again, it's another one of those that I feel like we're just scratching the surface. We're just getting to a point where, you know, AI is uh, I don't think I have to tell many of our users that this is something that's new, it's upcoming, and we're only going to find more and more implementations of it. So it's really exciting to see it being utilized uh, for such an effective purpose. Uh, so thanks again, Naya, for joining us. I'm so glad you were here for us and to get, give us kind of a little bit of a tour. And um, for the rest of our, our viewers, of course, there's uh, you can jump on the KIAI web, AI website. Uh, that's qii.ai. Um, that's the name of the software, so you can check out their website. And of course, if you need more information about this software, how it can be implemented, uh, make sure you go to armus.com. You can check out our information and, of course, uh, get in contact with us here, both in the United States and in Canada. Uh, so, Naya, thanks again for joining us, and thank you guys, our viewers, for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one.